This GoPro Hero 6 weighs 114 grams. And that's lighter than the newest Hero 7, 8, and 9, but it's still not as light as it could be. What if we could make this GoPro weigh 26 grams? What if you didn't have to decide between great video quality and lightweight, especially when flying lighter quadcopters like a 95 millimeter beta FPV or that new Flywoo four inch that flies for like 28 minutes or something? What if you didn't have to decide between great image quality and lightweight? That is what we are investigating today because we are gonna rip the guts out of this GoPro and stuff it into something much lighter and make it weigh 26 grams. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. This is the actual product that we're working with today. Beta FPV has made a stripped down case. This is actually injection molded. There's a link to the case down in the video description if you wanna do this. The first thing I'm gonna do is look in preferences and about this GoPro. And you wanna see that you're on version number 1.6. And the reason for that is that firmware 1.6, there's something about it that makes it work better with real steady. And the assumption is that if you're building a naked GoPro like this, you're probably doing cinematic style stuff where you're gonna be using real steady. You're probably, not, if you're gonna be like freestyle bando bashing, then you probably don't want to compromise the durability of your GoPro. It's not gonna live long. So you want firmware 1.6, and there is a tutorial out there for how to put 1.6 back on the GoPro. I'll put a link to that tutorial down in the video description. The next thing we're gonna do is go into the GoPro app on our phone, and we will make sure that we can connect to the GoPro. If you haven't linked it before, you're gonna to wanna to do that because the only way, because we're gonna remove the screen, that'll be the only way to really configure the settings on the GoPro. And when you do that, it's gonna ask if you wanna update the camera and you're gonna say no, because you've put the older 1.6 firmware on the GoPro and that's where you're gonna to wanna to leave it. In the GoPro, we're gonna to go to connections and we're gonna change the Wi-Fi band to 2.4 gigahertz. People say you should do this to avoid interference with your five gig video. I have personally never noticed this to be a problem, especially while I'm flying. Maybe sometimes if the GoPro is powered on and I'm like right near my goggles, you can change it to 2.4 though. Before I start disassembling the GoPro, I gotta say thank you to a whole bunch of people who have done tutorials about how to do this that I referred to as I was trying to figure out how to do it. Most especially a YouTuber named Wiffles, and I'll put a link to his disassembly tutorial down in the video description. I'm still gonna show you my disassembly I went back and forth on it because I was like, well, should I just say, I just go watch somebody else do it. But you guys come to my channel because you want to watch my content. I still want to give credit to the people who helped me along the way though. Let's do it. We'll take out the battery and the SD card and we'll begin the disassembly. The side door comes off, just lift it up and give it a little bit of a twist after lifting it up. This uh, lens cover comes off. You actually pull out and then twist. The very first time you do it on a camera, it takes a lot of force. There we go. See, I was getting my fingernail under it and pulling it up that did it. It's a little counterintuitive because like if you're used to opening pill bottles, you push down and twist, but that's just not how it works. Then we need to remove this front cover and um, some people have done it, say the adhesive that is on it is pretty aggressive. So we're gonna, we're gonna get some hot air going and we're gonna heat it up and see if that helps. The tool that I'm gonna use is this plastic pry tool. You can also, oh yeah, that's, that's coming apart right there, I can hear it. You can use a prop, you can use the end of a broken prop or a not broken prop. I hear the adhesive coming loose. Oh, there we go. Just went right in there. This feels so wrong. Oh yeah, there we go. Going around the edge seems to be, there seems to be adhesive maybe around the edge specifically, because I can hear it breaking loose as I work my way around. Uh, 
I'm encountering a lot of resistance right here. I don't want to be super aggressive and damage the screen though. So just going to work, keep working it. What about this? That worked. Next step is to remove these tiny screws here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's find out if that's all of them. Oh, great, they're torque screws. Well, of course they are. Well, I don't have a torch bit this small. Or do I? <laughs> this is the torch driver that I bought. Oh gosh, when, when did I get this? What did this come with? I don't remember. This came with something and I kept it. When am I ever going to need that again? Uh, said no one. And it is miraculously the right size. Oh, I do know what it came with. <gasps> it's when I got a, a, a replacement a screen protector for my Hero 5 session. So it actually sort of makes sense that it's the same size because it's the same company. Well, fancy. I've seen this laying on my desk so many times over the past easily months, maybe a year, and thought, ah, no, when am I going to use that again? Today, it saved my butt. Six screws removed. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this should lift right off. I think. All right, we got some cables here, so let's be super careful. This is covered here by, oh, that is the connector. Hi, yikes. Let's pop that off. Thought I was just gonna pull off the tape, but no. Um, this one just pulls up from there. Sorry, I did it. I did, wasn't on camera when I did it, but it just, it just comes and pulls. Just flip it up and it came off. Okay, good. Back cover, done. So then we've got some Phillips head screws, cross head screws, to hold the board to this front piece. Two, oh, different lengths, huh? Three, next step is to peel back this plate. Just gonna, yeah. Okay, that's just, okay. And we gotta carefully get rid of this adhesive here. This leftover foam. Oh, perfect. Next, we're gonna pull out this ribbon cable right here. Uh, and this does not appear to be like a locking connector. It's just friction fit. Notice that there's a tiny little tab right here. See this tab? This is not part of the ribbon cable. Don't pull on the ribbon cable. Pull on this tab. That's why it's there. I ripped off the tab. Don't, don't do that. Next, there's two screws here. With a plastic pry tool, we're going to pull up on the USB-C cable, this ribbon cable here. And that will separate out this USB-C plug mm, board, and we'll set that aside. Next, there is a screw down inside here. And this piece will come off. Also, this little piece will come off, and I don't think we're going to need that again, but... Next, we'll use our plastic pry tool to pop this connector up. Okay. And we'll do the same for this guy right here. The next step is to peel off this metal film. We're going to want to be super careful not to damage the board. 
I'm going to go in with my sharpest tweezers, but I'm also going to go in as carefully as possible. And it means you won't be able to see exactly what I do. But it seems like, it seems like the smartest way to do this is there's just a little bit of space right here to come underneath and yeah, pry up. Maybe you will get to see what I do. Oh yeah, that worked. That seems to have worked really well. Oh yeah. Yeah, that worked really well. As far as I can tell. I mean, I could have just killed it. At this point, they say it should just lift right off. Are there any screws that I've missed? No, no. I got those screws. Oh. Let's just use the plastic pry tool carefully, very carefully. If ever I should be using an anti-static wrist, uh, wrist strap, it's today. All right, we got the motherboard off, and now we got to get this screw off? Let's find out. There's one more screw right here. Holds the lens on. So we're going to take the lens and the motherboard and it's just going to set in here and I'm going to snap it back down on this uh, plug right here. Got some thermal compound on my finger. Hold on. I'm going to take a Q tip and some alcohol. Just clean off this thermal compound a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a little bit of goop also on the SD card slot. Then we're going to take the motherboard and lens assembly, slide the lens down into the front of the case. There we go. A little bit of friction fit there. This package comes with the Beta FPV case and it includes a special circuit board that provides power and emulates the button function. And this is the piece we're going to want next. And that is just going to set down here and I'm not a hundred, I think it just stacks on. Like it just makes contact somehow. Oh, beta FPV. I see. I didn't understand until just this moment. It, um, it's got connectors here and it snaps down in place of the existing connectors. That is pretty slick beta FPV. I got to hand it to you. Out of the screw set that comes with the case, I'm going to take these two screws and they're going to go through the board, through the uh, power board that came with the Beta FPV kit. There is one of this tiny little screw which is going to go in this corner. And then two of these longer screws are going to go to either side of the lens. Double check that your buttons work and are lined up correctly. And I got a little bit of a kind of a squoosh on here, but it all seems to have gone together. Give it a squeeze and make sure my screws are snug. Oh yeah, some of the screws weren't fully tight until I squeezed the case with my hand while tightening it down. It felt like they were tight enough and might be at risk of stripping, but now that I've pressed it with my hand, I can tighten them just a little more. This one still doesn't feel like it's gripping, but there you go. Next we're going to install this light pipe into the back piece. Uh, find the flared out wide end and that 
faces out, and then just push it straight in. And it kind of doesn't want to go, but if you keep working at it, you will eventually get it. Or you'll drop it on the floor and lose it. So I ended up just kind of pressing it in with these forceps. I kind of felt like touching a light pipe with a metal tool might not be great because I might scratch it, but it did make it easy for me to just apply the exact right pressure to pop it in. And now it is fully installed. Then this is going to go on the back. And the remaining six screws are going to go in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six to finish holding it together. Well, folks, one more piece of this puzzle that might remain to be done. This here is the Wi-Fi antenna, or probably not the Wi-Fi antenna because it's not the right size, but it looks like it's some kind of a connector maybe to lead to a Wi-Fi antenna somewhere else on the case. Um, and running a Wi-Fi or any RF device with no antenna can burn it out. So some people will desolder this and solder on an antenna and I'm gonna give it a try. So we're gonna take our caliper here and we're gonna measure 32 millimeters, which is a, what is that, a quarter wavelength, 2.4 gigahertz antenna and cut it off. And I guess I can just kind of lay down in here. Yeah, just maybe fold it around the... I guess we get better connectivity if I put it towards the outside. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that seems, that seems good. Kind of wrap it around the lens. I mean, it'd be better if it was straight to be fair, but anything's better than nothing. We're not going for maximum range here. We're just going for please don't burn out. Yeah, that seems good. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll see how it works. Holy cow. I guess the only thing left to do is to take it out and fly it. And yeah, we know what kind of image we're going to get out of a GoPro. It's a GoPro Hero 6. But how is this quad going to fly with a GoPro? Is there going to be vibration problems? How is Real Steady going to work? And how is this Naked Hero 6 going to stack up against this little guy? This is the Insta360 Go, and a whole lot of micropilots have been using this to get shockingly good, I accidentally just turned it on, shockingly good footage. So I'm really curious how these two stack up, and I'm going to put that in another video coming up on the channel, so make sure that you are subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss it. Thank you so much to Beta FPV for making this cool little solution. This is a really cool, but in addition to that, thank you to the people who pioneered the concept of a naked GoPro, because Beta FPV didn't come up with this. They just made this shell easily accessible and they kind of refined it so that it was more accessible to like the average guy. But people have been doing this for a while and they deserve a lot of credit as well. But I don't know. I don't know who exactly to give credit to, so I will just thank the unnamed pioneers who risked their GoPros and Beta FPV and you. Thank you for watching. That's going to do it for this video. Happy flying, you guys. What are you still doing here? The video's over. Do you watch all the videos all the way to the end? Wow. You are a super fan. Thank you. That actually helps the channel a lot. When you watch the videos all the way to the end, YouTube loves that. You know what else YouTube loves? When you subscribe. Or when you join my Patreon for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned. Actually, YouTube doesn't like you to join my Patreon. They don't get a cut of that.